special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. I'm doing great. Thank you, Neil. And yes, I'm so excited. Gotham Chopra, you are so talented. I don't know if you were just born talented or how much of it is work and how much of it is just inborn natural talent. I'd love to talk about that. But you've gone from comic books to movies to uh, the a uh, religion of sports, which I think is a lot of people's favorite show ever. Now you're doing this with Bon Jovi. Uh, you've you've uh, known a lot of people over the years. You were good friends with one of my favorite people, Michael Jackson, and uh, some other people along the way. And I just your life is just fun. Like I I I don't know if you have so much fun uh, doing it as I have reading about it. But I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me, and what a kind um, uh, introduction. Look, I do have a lot of fun. I'm incredibly lucky. I've also um, learned from everyone I've worked with, which is, you know, you're only as good as the people you put around you. So, you know, I have the incredible fortune of working with so many talented people um, around me. And, yeah, I mean, we get to do great stuff and, and learn along the way. So it's it's a lot of fun. You know, and it's it's amazing when you think about where you're at and the work that you put in to get to where you are today. Did you think about that, especially in filmmaking, that you could get to the level that you are known and work with such amazing projects like this one? Yeah, I mean, it it is a lot of work. And, you know, it's, I've worked historically with tons of amazingly talented elite athletes and now you know I'm, i've been doing this thing with john bon jovi for the last two years which is coming out um you know the the sort of thing i see the common characteristic is how hard they work like the work ethic and just the grinding there's a lot of talented people out in the world um the ones who i think get separated and have you know success is like they just keep going <laughs> they just keep pushing they keep grinding they don't compromise when people tell them, hey, this is never going to happen. They're the ones that say, OK, cool, watch me. And so, you know, I've, I've certainly learned from that and tried to apply that to my own life. And like I said, also, especially you see it all the time, team sports, band, you know, bands like you're the front man. And I'm, you know, as the filmmaker, as the director or in you know the co-founder of a company, I get to play that role. But it's about, you know, the team you put around you um, and. Yeah, I've, I've definitely tried to apl apply all of those lessons in my own life. Wow. You know, it's so interesting uh, that you talk about the hard work. And, and you know, everybody that I know that is a professional athlete or is at the top of their game and whatever they are, they're the first ones in the gym. They're the last ones there at night or in the studio or wherever they happen to be. And they do just keep going, have this fortitude about them that just keeps going and uh, while others quit. And it's the the winners that just keep going like Larry Bird. I'm a huge Larry Bird fan. I think you are too. And uh, I thought, I still think he's just such an example of someone who just put in the work, who decided that he was going to be the best that he could possibly be and put in the work. Do you, how do you think that mindset happens? You know, yeah, Larry Bird's a perfect example. You know, he, he, there's all of, Larry used to always say this guy is bigger, stronger, faster, but there's nobody tougher. There's nobody willing to work as hard as I am. Tom Brady, you know, is to this day in his mind, the 199th pick, the guy who, you know, didn't who dropped in the draft over and over and over again and was going to, you know, prove everyone wrong. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's, if there's a God given gift, if that's it, it's like that unwillingness to compromise because, you know, in sports or in music now, again, back to this, you know, Bon Jovi project, there's always people telling you, hey, you know, kid, I don't I don't think you got it. Like, you know, there's there's people out there that are more talented than you. But in what I've seen, you know, with Tom Brady, with John Bon Jovi, with Kobe Bryant, with Steph Curry, with Serena Williams, like they outwork everyone. They outwill everyone. And um, that is that is the gift that to yeah. me is you know it's more than the voice in john's case or more than the arm in tom's case it's the will and it's just it's something that like comes from inside of you i was talking to one of my clients uh gotham who coached 
Kobe, LeBron, and when we were in the first initial calls talking together, talked about the work ethic they put in. So let's go into John Bon John John Bon Jovi. Was the work ethic in music versus work ethic in sports? What are the differences? You know, I would say actually more similarities than differences because so one, you have to take care of yourself. Like you have to be really disciplined. Um, you know, both in music. If you're the front man, if you're the singer, I mean, you got to protect that voice. That voice is your, you know, is is your your tool. Um, and so, <clears throat> I think you know, it's working out every day. It's being, you know, very conscious about your diet, your sleep, your hydration, all these things that again you see in sports. Um, it does that consistency day after day after day, um, and really not you know, making mistakes um, and slipping up because anybody can be good for a year or two or like an album. Or, but you try to do that in John's case over 40 years. I mean, that takes a sort of discipline and commitment that is very, very unique. I'm so excited to see it. You know, the, the thank you, good night, the uh, Bon Jovi story, I believe it comes out in just a few days, which is so exciting. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting to me too, Gotham, how it's not just about the sports or just about the music or even just about the work ethic, but but it's all encompassing. And it's, it, to, to me, everything is spiritual. And so it seems to be also just the spiritual journey that you draw out when you meet with people. Your, the way you approach the episodes that you've done, the the people that you've worked with, it's entirely different than anything else out there. You draw out of them um, a whole different areas of their life that you never hear about, which I think is so great. And so I'm wondering, where does the spiritual play a, a role, do you believe, in the whole thing? Again, thank you for saying all that. Um, look, my family background, my father is Deepak Chopra. I have, you know, and he's in the world of spirituality. He was, you know, was originally a medical a physician but then probably when i was a teenager I really had first a personal transformation that then became a catalyst for a professional transformation and over the years he's written you know almost 100 books at this point um and really been at the forefront of like i guess you would call it the mindfulness movement you know meditation yoga all that stuff in the west um so i've grew up grown up around that and i i think as you know, when I look back at my childhood, like I was a huge sports fan. I was like, I grew up, you know, you mentioned Larry Bird, like watching that. I grew up in Boston um, and, you know, seeing the big three play out. And, you know, I, I always sort of, you know, at the time back then, the Red Sox also, I was a huge Red Sox fan. The Red Sox were cursed, but Fenway Park was this cathedral in the middle of the city. And I was used to think like, then like everything my father sort of talks about and the wisdom traditions of, you know, religious and spiritual um, traditions exists in sports like sports is if you're an athlete it's about becoming the best version of yourself if you're a fan it's sort of becoming part of something you know bigger than yourself and so i just always kind of had a passion for it and saw it i guess in a way that was slightly different you know sports to me was more than just about the final score um it was it was really about being the best version of yourself. And I think that's the thing when I sort of boil it down now and I look, Oh, like, okay, interesting sports now into music. It's really about greatness. You know, what does it take to, to be the best? And uh, I'm fascinated by that. And the type of, those are the subjects that I kind of try to chase after and, and then break down. Totally. Kim. So the love question, we only have a couple minutes with, Gotham, I wish we had more time, but go ahead with your love question. Yeah, so Gotham, uh, a few years ago, I decided I was going to figure out the true meaning of love. So I dedicated a year to go after it, the see, pray, love kind of experience. And uh, most of the time I was in Haiti while I was doing it, which was interesting. And the things that I found out about love just kind of blew my mind. And uh, love to me just changed in my life. And I'm curious I know you got to love what you do and, and love people around you and, and all of that kind of stuff. But what is, where, where is love in your life? What role does love play in your life? How do you see it? Hmm, what a great question. I've done like tons of interviews for this and no one has even come close <laughs> to asking that question. Um, look, love is at the epicenter of everything. I am in a great 
um, situation where I'm passionate about what I do. I've also been married now for 20 plus years. And, um, you know, my wife, I met her when we were, we were um, college sweethearts freshman year. But, you know, the thing about love that's the same is like love's not all easy, you know, and it's like sports. It's like, you know, sports is often about failure and and how do and resilience. How do you pick yourself up? You know, even the best we use this analogy all the time. Even the best hitters in the history of baseball strike out, you know, six seven times um, um, out of ten. And so, you know, I think love's the same thing. If you've been married like I have for twenty plus years, you know, it's not easy. It's about doing the work. It's about showing up. It's about being accountable. It's about being resilient. And, you know, I think, you know, romance is great, but real love happens across time. And it's about commitment and um, compa compassion. And, um, you know, I, it's just something you can't take your eye off of. And um, same thing in my work. Um, and, and But I love it. And that's why I keep still doing it. Fantastic. Again, uh, available on Hulu, April 26th. Thank you. Good night. The Bon, John, bon Jovi story. Appreciate it, Gotham. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. All right, that was a special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love is Podcast, guys. Take care.